All right, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Lauren Reeves. I'm with the Weather Service in Peachtree City, and today I'll be giving your special weather briefing for today, Friday, April 10th at 2 p.m. All right, so our main points today, we'll be taking a look at the severe threat on Sunday into Monday. So the overall story here, there is the potential for a severe thunderstorm outbreak Sunday afternoon and into the evening and getting into Monday morning for much of the southeastern U.S. So following that, we could also see a broken line of strong to severe thunderstorms late Sunday night into early Monday. So overall, we're looking at potential for an afternoon event heading into the evening and into the overnight into early morning. So the main impacts that we're looking at is basically all hazards possible. So looking at damaging winds that could down trees and power lines, potential for tornadoes, in addition to the potential for strong or long track tornadoes, we could see hail as well, in addition to heavy rain, which could lead to some localized flooding issues. All right, just wanted to step through and take a quick second to look at our potential watches. So as far as our tornado threat is concerned, there is a potential for a tornado watch or severe thunderstorm watch on Sunday, getting into early Monday across generally any portion of the area. So we'll be keeping an eye out for that with the event. Otherwise, flooding might be an issue as well, and we do have the potential for a flash flood watch, maybe on Sunday, maybe concentrated across northern and northeastern Georgia up in the mountains. We haven't discussed that too much yet, but there is the potential for that. Now we'll jump into the outlook from the Storm Prediction Center. So on the left-hand side here, we're looking at the day three convective outlook, which is going to be for Sunday. I do want to say this is subject to change with later forecasts, especially as we get into day two and into day one. But overall, the story here is that we have an enhanced risk, which is level three out of five over uh, much of northwestern and western Georgia. In addition, we have a slight risk, which is level two out of five over the rest of our area. The general timing that we're looking at, which is definitely something we're continuing to fine tune here, is Sunday afternoon into the evening, getting into early on Monday. And the main threats, as I mentioned earlier, will be our will be all hazards, the winds, tornadoes, hail, and potential for flash flooding. All right, so just taking a quick look at the available energy with the system and the low level shear, I won't get too, too deep in this, but just looking at Sunday afternoon, looking at our first threat area, you can see in that red circle there. So that's one of the areas we're looking at that has a good amount of instability, basically meaning moisture and uh, enough energy to create storms. If I move forward just a little bit, how we're kind of looking at the front coming through the area, and this is looking at 2 a.m. on Monday, and it's pretty much the same story here. The area I have circled in red is pretty much showing our instability, and that coupled with the very strong winds that we'll have aloft, that could be able to come to the surface. So overall, we've got strong winds and enough instability, so we're looking at a tornado threat. That's all this is basically saying, in addition to a strong wind threat. Okay, taking just another look at our severe risk on Sunday, here this graphic is showing our severe thunderstorm probability. So the red area is looking at a 30% chance of severe storms for Sunday, meaning it's pretty likely we'll have severe storms across the area in red. Now that hatched area that's on top of the red portion is showing us an area where we could see some significant severe thunderstorms. So not only those gusts up to 60 miles per hour or so, but potentially even higher into that 70 mile per hour range. And as we mentioned, tornado threat, not only the potential for brief tornadoes, in addition, some stronger or long track tornadoes will be possible, in addition to the threat of some large hail. And so this would be especially in any of the stronger storms that can cross this area. But that's what we're looking at for day three, which is Sunday. So we'll continue to have this fine tune as we get into the next couple of days. So now getting into Monday, I don't wanna to stress too much um, as far as getting into Monday. This is generally going to be a Sunday night into the Monday and Sunday during the day event, but we are we do have a day four outlook, which is around 15% or so, but really it is a continuation of the storms moving into the area and then out through the Southeast. So for Monday morning, we're at a 15% and honestly, the main threats are exactly the same. It's generally just the system exiting the area. Okay, so we'll take a quick look at timing. So overall here, I just have one model solution. This is just one of the ones we have that does go out a little bit further than some of the other ones. It is just one possible solution, just maybe to get an idea of what's going on. 
So looking at Sunday morning, we're anticipating having a warm front lift through the area. Now, early Sunday morning, there is the chance we could see some showers moving in. Um, but aside from that, that's generally early Sunday morning. So once we get into late Sunday morning and into Sunday afternoon, it looks like we could see, as I go forward, some of those storms lifting north. Now I'm looking at Sunday afternoon now, and although it looks fairly clear across the area, keep in mind this is just one solution. So now if you see this yellow circle here, this is looking at some of the discrete cells that are possible ahead of the line of storms that we're expecting. So basically, as you can see, this area pointing here to these cells, we're anticipating that these could move into our area Sunday afternoon, potentially late Sunday afternoon and into the evening, which would bring a severe threat to most of the area. Then as we take a look at Sunday evening, getting a little bit later into the evening, I have this yellow line here. This is pretty much showing a line of storms that could potentially form and move east into our area. And then if you look further to the west, there's an area of precipitation here and a cold front that's showing the, the actual front and line of storms moving into the area. So being that we're still a little bit uncertain with some of the uh, factors in this system, there is the potential that this line out front could be a little bit stronger than it looks here. Again, like I said, just one model solution. This line here could still be severe and likely will be severe. So we're still kind of just keeping that in mind. It may be the front line or the back line. We'll have to continue to take a look at that as we get closer to Sunday. Okay, so going through our threat levels and confidence. So this is generally looking at the whole event Overall, as I mentioned, we have our two biggest hazards are going to be damaging winds and tornadoes, but otherwise we will have threats for rainfall or for heavy rainfall and flooding. Mainly the highest totals will be across northern and northeastern Georgia, but any area could really see some isolated flooding issues in addition to hail. So overall, our forecast confidence is kind of between a three and a four right now. We do have confidence that we could see a severe weather outbreak but the confidence in the individual portions looking at Sunday afternoon versus Sunday evening in the line and Sunday, early Sunday, early Monday morning, excuse me, as that moves through. So maybe our confidence is a little bit lower due to those timing issues, but that should be resolved as we get into the next few days. Otherwise, this could be broken down a little bit more into separate rounds in the future. Okay, taking a quick look at rainfall, I mentioned it a couple other times before but our highest totals look to be about three inches, potentially up to four inches across Northern Georgia. And looking across the Atlanta area up to about two inches uh, with some likely higher amounts possible and a little bit less further South, but overall generally in the one to three inch rain. The heaviest period of rain is expected to be late Sunday night and early Monday morning, especially with the front coming through. But there are some areas such as Northern Georgia that could see the potential for three different rounds of rain early on Monday in addition to Monday afternoon and evening and then as the front crosses through late Sunday into Monday. In the bottom right hand corner I have the day three excessive rainfall outlook and as you can see the red area there shows a moderate risk of excessive rainfall saying that we could have some flooding issues especially across that area but honestly across the entire area with the line coming through. Okay. So a quick summary here, overall we have a severe threat on Sunday into Monday. We do have the potential for a severe thunderstorm outbreak beginning Sunday afternoon and into the evening across much of the southeastern U.S. and then continuing as a front brings a line of storms into the area late Sunday night and into early Monday morning. Just to keep in mind, this could be an after afternoon and overnight event. So just because you may see some times where it's not raining and it is a little bit cloudy doesn't mean that we're not going to still have potential for severe weather later in the afternoon and evening and then into the overnight. As I mentioned before, our main impacts will be damaging winds and tornadoes. So we could have downed trees and power lines in addition to strong long track tornadoes possible. And then also we do have threats for hail as well as heavy rain, which could lead to localized flooding. Also, just as an extra side note, uh, we've been getting some questions about tornado shelters and how to shelter in place in light of current events. And so the AMS has issued some guidelines for sheltering from tornadoes, especially during a statewide shelter in place. So the main tips that they have are to make sure to prepare now. Your normal routine may not be exactly the same as what it is, especially for the people in your areas. They may normally go to specific tornado shelters or something like that. 
those public shelters might or might not be open. So it's best to go ahead and prepare now and know what you should do in a uh, place of an emergency. In addition, we've got some graphics going out on social media and on our front page to help with, you know, what's a good shelter. But otherwise, I left this link here on the PowerPoint so those that download the file can click on that link there. Otherwise, you can just Google uh, AMS shelter in place guidelines, something similar to that, and find that on the web. Otherwise, taking a look at our, any future updates, we're anticipating sending an email tonight, especially if we have any significant changes. And then looking on Saturday, April 11th, we're expecting to have another special webinar at 2 p.m. And then on Sunday morning, we are also expecting to do another uh, special webinar. We don't have a time for Sunday morning yet, but it's looking likely that we'll have one scheduled relatively soon. Otherwise, we'll be transitioning to warning operations uh, early or Sunday afternoon, early Sunday. So any updates like that will be relayed in NWS chat or on our social media. Also, that being said, if you do have any questions in the meantime after this briefing, you can feel free to send us an email or give us a call and we'll be happy to answer that. So that's all that I have for the briefing today.